Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Join this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg, and it is the Awesome Chat, and uh, this is our interview series for AwesomeCast.net. And today, in conjunction with InsertCoinToBegin.com, our colleagues over there, uh, we're getting a very, very geeky, very video game music-based uh, interview today. Very excited about that, but first, please ch- go check out everything at, like I said, InsertCoinToBegin.com, AwesomeCast.net, and subscribe to this and other podcast shows, content that we're been, we've been doing over, seems like forever, doesn't it? Uh, but uh, anyways, today we have Arnie Roth. He is with us. Uh, he is the composer of the upcoming Distant Worlds music from Final Fantasy, along with the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra here in town. How are you doing today, Arnie? I'm doing great. Awesome. How are you? Awesome, awesome. So, so tell me, first of all, uh, uh, give me a little bit of background. You are a, a Grammy-winning uh, composer, right? Yeah, let me, I want to clear up, you introduced me as the composer of... Conductor, uh, I'm so the, sorry. <laughs> the that's right, as composer of the uh, of the Final Fantasy concert that we're doing with the Pittsburgh Symphony, we call it Distant Worlds Music from Final Fantasy, mm-hmm. and we've been touring for eight years with that. Wow. Um, I work with Square Enix in Japan, which is the publisher of the game Final Fantasy, and all fans throughout the world will know that the primary composer of the Final Fantasy series is the great Nobu Uematsu, and uh, we uh, are indebted to him for hours and hours, probably thousands of hours of music that he's composed uh, for the last, I don't know, 28 years of Final Fantasy now. Um, but yes, I'm a Grammy award-winning musician, uh, conductor, and I work directly with Nobu Uomatsu, the composer, and with Square Enix in Japan uh, to present this concert uh, all over the world. Uh, we just performed with the Seattle Symphony last week. Nice. Uh, we were in Los Angeles at, during the E3 convention a few weeks before that. Um, we literally played this in uh, Royal Albert Hall in London, in Paris, uh, in South America, in Buenos Aires, um, in all over Asia. And uh, it's just a, a true joy to bring it everywhere in the world. So. It's going to be fantastic bringing it to the Pittsburgh Symphony, one of the world's really great orchestras. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, this is uh, it, so. What brings you to a project like Final Fantasy? Uh, that's that's a more difficult question because <laughs> the the simple answer, the circumstances were that um, as music director and conductor of the Chicago Land Pops Orchestra, mm-hmm. back in two thousand and four, we were looking around for programming and doing research on lots of different possibilities. Um, One thing that came up through a colleague of mine, I've been involved with multimedia and and, uh, uh, directing uh, pop artists and uh, classical artists for many, many years as uh, an arranger, composer, and conductor. And as we were looking around the world for programming for our next year's concerts, it was brought up to me that Japan has been performing music of various video game series for many, many years, um, since 1998, Um, and we had never had a public concert of video game music in North America, Mm -hmm. Uh, and at that point, we had never had one in Europe at that point either. So it seemed like the rest of the world was quite behind the times with that, and we decided to take a chance, and we... Um, launched the first public concert of the music of Final Fantasy in February of 2005 um, in Chicago and at a fairly large venue, um, Rosemont Theater, and at 4,000 seats, and it sold out. It was a very exciting concert. That concert was called Dear Friends, uh, music from Final Fantasy. And that was the first time that I was able to meet Nobu Uematsu and start working directly with the the game publisher, Square Enix. Um, and since that point, it just kind of blossomed. My relationship with Square Enix uh, became um, much more of a long-term relationship, uh, as with the composer, the primary composer as well. And uh, I did several concerts for them in Japan and elsewhere around the world at the invitation of Square Enix. 
Um, and they eventually said, uh, can we develop a, an actual global touring model with license uh, to bring it all over the world? Because there were so many areas of the world that had never had a concert of Final Fantasy music at that point. And that was the genesis of the formation of um, the, current, the current tour, which is Distant World and Final Fantasy. Awesome, awesome, and, and and it's been really interesting because uh, Final Fantasy isn't the only one that's been around. I know we, we in Pittsburgh we've been fortunate to have uh, video games live, and and uh, I believe they did uh, mm-hmm. Zelda music last year as well. Uh, what do you see to the right. rise of this uh, uh, this like, connection? I mean, you seem to be one of the first uh, groups that did this kind of thing. Um, but uh, you know, what do you see about that? And is this a really good thing to kind of bring people into the symphony that maybe don't get to experience that? Yeah, certainly it's been a real boon for um, symphony orchestras. Um, you're right that many of the fans of the video game series, this may be their first experience with a live orchestra concert, mm-hmm. um, which, of course, we want to do. We want to encourage them to come into venues that are even in their own hometown that they've never visited before, uh, listening to this magnificent uh, orchestra. It's it's very, there's a couple things with this. One is that um, this concert is dedicated to the presenting the music as close to the way it was heard in the, in the original form in the game as possible. Um, because Final Fantasy has been around for 28 years, that means that we're going back to some items that were composed on computer chips, you know, for 8 bits before the platform went up to 16-bit data. And so that involves orchestrating these little two- and three-voice um, synthesizer or, or synthetic voices that were generated just simply by a computer chip mm-hmm. uh, for many years. Uh, it wasn't until it, it went to 16-bit data platforms that they were able to record live music, um, orchestras, rock bands, choruses, um, all different formats. And Final Fantasy also was the first game that recorded live music for the video game. I think that was in 1997, I believe. Uh, the seven, seven uh, right, yeah. I think it was Final Fantasy VIII, Roman numeral VIII, was the first one that had live orchestra recording mm-hmm. as part of the soundtrack of the game. So Final Fantasy has been at the forefront of this for a long time. Um, you know, there are other um, other video game tours that are out there. You mentioned uh, Zelda. That's more a situation where um, the orchestra is performing a, a score that is a, an arranger's fantasy on themes of Zelda. I've conducted many of those before, too, the the music of Zelda. And again, it's more about the mind of the arranger than it is about the original composition. We hear themes and you're accompanying a film, essentially. The orchestra puts on a headset and a click track and, and they're basically an underscore to that film, which is images from the game, of course. Right. Um, that That's not what Distant Worlds is. In, in this case, we're playing music from all 14 of the main Roman numeral releases of the game. Each one of the releases is Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., all the way up to 14 right now. Um, and uh, Video Games Live is another kind of a, a concert where it's more about a light show, frankly. Um, Video Games Live performs sometimes with a, as few as 15 or 18 musicians. Uh, again, wearing a headset and in sync with um, pre-recorded tracks and things like that. This is a completely live orchestra and chorus concert, Distant Worlds. Um, uh, every aspect of it is live. I, we bring our own video operator, and the music drives the show so that the video operator is reacting to our music performance. Video starts when I uh, launch the orchestra at the beginning of each piece, and he's able to... Uh, crossfade between sources so that he's staying in what we call soft synchronization with the live music performance, uh, whichever piece we happen to be playing. Uh, so there's a giant screen. There's a full orchestra. We're using the Mendelssohn Choir of Pittsburgh. Um, and there's the entire Pittsburgh Symphony, plus some vocal soloists. Um, we're doing a, um, actually, we're doing an opera 
that Nobu Uematsu composed as part of Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VI. Uh, it's called Opera Maria and Draco, and uh, it's about a 15-minute piece that involves narrator, three vocal soloists, as well as chorus and orchestra. So it's a very exciting piece. We're happy to bring it to Pittsburgh. We'll also have uh, the composer Hitoshi Sakimoto, who is the composer of Final Fantasy XII and Final Fantasy Tactics and several other releases from uh, Square Enix. He's flying in from Japan, and he'll be with us. So I'm excited about that as well. Um, I could give you some more highlights, I suppose, as well. That's that's great. That's the main main program. That's great. I actually have some questions, uh, uh, again, from the rest of the staff here at InCircling to begin that they wanted to know when we we knew that we were fortunate enough to be uh, talking with you about this. Uh, First of all, uh, whether I don't know know if you were just kind of more into the music side of things. Well, first of all, have you actually dived in and played some of the games yourself? I've tried, believe me. <laughs> hey, I'm <laughs> but, in the same boat. I'm but a... I have to I have to be honest with you, it's uh-huh. a very difficult game. Oh yeah. Final Fantasy is an is an RPG, a role playing game, as mm-hmm. you know. And um it's for me to get to the various music themes that I'm working on mm-hmm. on any given concert or pro- project re- would require hours and hours of playing and I'm just simply <laughs> not good enough to get to all those themes. So it's actually much right. more efficient for me to work directly with the composers. Right. And there are many different composers um, mm-hmm. from the series. And that's a great joy, anyhow, for me, uh, mm-hmm. is to be able to work directly with them and see what they really want uh, from these various scores to bring to life on stage. Mm-hmm. Hey, no shame in that. I, I've, I've tried to dive into a couple <laughs> of them. I'm more of an arcade fighter fan myself, so so right, the first-person right. shooter is my kind of thing. But I definitely appreciate the Final Fantasy games. I've, I've dived into a little bit of like, Kingdom Hearts and stuff like that. But aside from that, aside from, you know, obviously not playing them, but as far as piece-wise, story-wise, uh, do you have a favorite of the Final Fantasies where you like the stuff that came from maybe a particular one? It's hard to pick a favorite mm-hmm. out of all these. Um, you might be able to, again, we d- we are focusing on the music. All of the visuals that we present are in the service of the music. So uh, we're, cr- we're creating visual sequences. They're from Sprenix or out of our own company. Mm-hmm. Um, from the actual original footage from the game, based on what piece we're playing. So it, it has to directly relate to each piece that we're right, playing. Right. Um, Final Fantasy just recently had an announcement, uh, literally a few weeks ago during the E3 convention, that they are working on the release of a remake of Final Fantasy VII, which was very exciting news for most Final Fantasy fans, because Seven is probably, globally, the most popular game. Um, and the fact that they would be updating it with new animation, uh, perhaps with new music recording as well, is very exciting um, for all fans. But in terms of picking a favorite, it's really difficult for me to uh, give you any one uh, version of the game. I would be, I would be able to give you a couple of favorite battle themes mm-hmm. or favorite character themes or that kind of thing because. Final Fantasy is is um, again. It's this this wonderful combination. It's an RPG game, but Nobu Uematsu started out by writing individual themes or light motifs for every single character, every important battle, every important quest or journey, um, re- relationships. You know, um, whether they're love or uh, love relationships or friendships. He had a, a musical theme for each one of these, and over the 28 years of Final Fantasy, some of these themes have become so near and dear to the hearts of the Final Fantasy players um, that it's it's actually astounding. We have there are fans that um, uh, use that music for their weddings. Mm-hmm. There are fans that propose marriage during our our concerts. We've been uh, approached by fans that they wanted to do something special at the concert. Um, it's a very emotional tie to the music, and I don't know that there's many other uh, video game series that are like that. Um, we've searched, but there's uh, very few that have that combination. Mm-hmm. Are there are there any other uh, uh, video games that like you say? I think you mentioned you were, you were involved with the Zelda project as well. 
Um, is there anything out there, you know, obviously I don't, I don't think there's much as grand as Final Fantasy, uh, but is there anything that you would like to work if they if they did maybe convert something to a, to a symphony or if they have something out there already? Yeah, there's, there's a few. Um, I don't think... Um, from the from the family of games that Square Enix produces, mm-hmm. uh, we're very interested in Kingdom Hearts because Kingdom Hearts has grown in popularity and um, uh, continues to release new versions very regularly, and the fan base is growing quite a bit. Um, it also overlaps with some of the Final Fantasy characters and music, so uh, we think there's great potential there. Then uh, from some of the other platforms, it's hard to ignore the huge growing popularity of things like Halo, for Mm. instance. Um, Though uh, Final Fantasy has sold more units globally um, and is, you know, it's been around for 28 years. Halo has been around for many fewer years than that. So um, Halo's grown quite a bit. I just don't know because the nature of the game and the nature of the way music is used in the game, whether it could support an actual concert series. Um, but that's, that's one. And there's several others that we of course have our eye on and, and, uh, are investigating all the time. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so I understand you were involved with Mannheim street steamroller. What was that experience like? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually one of the original, members I've played with them for nice. well over 25 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I continue um, to be involved. Uh, Chip Davis and I are more than just colleagues. We're almost brothers at this point. And I produce a lot of records for uh, their record company, American Gramophone, the parent company of uh, Mannheim Steamiller. Um, you know, it was a great experience being able to present alternative uh, versions, not just of the Christmas music, but um, Mm -hmm. Mannheim Stimuler was kind of one of the grandfather musical groups of the New Age movement when New Age was actually a very different kind of music uh, back when it was first introduced. Um, Now it's been kind of thrown into uh, easy listening or, or jazz or any number of things that have crossed over. But in the early days, there were very few groups that were doing this kind of highly structured, um, in many ways classically written um, music that crossed over between Baroque and classical era and rock and roll. Um, the vocabulary was a wonderful mashup of those things. And uh, we had a great time touring the world with, uh, with that. And they continue um, both selling records and uh, touring, especially during the Christmas period. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Chris and I worked, uh, Chip and I rather, worked together all the time. So um, uh, I stay very close to the Mannheim Stimuler family. Mm-hmm. Another another collaboration I have listed here uh, that, that that some of the guys uh, brought up. We're big fans of Patrick Stewart. I understand you had a, a, at least a project with him as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, that one was an interesting one. It, it came out of my involvement with um, a production called Every Good Boy Deserves Favor. This was a, um, a, a new production. It was commissioned by the London Symphony. And Patrick Stewart was the original um, director of this in London when it was first launched. It was commemorating the 100th birthday of the uh, London Symphony at the time. And we were touring in the United States with the entire Star Trek Next Generation cast. Oh, nice! Um, with this, with this score was uh, was written by Andre Previn, and the the play was by Tom Stoppard. Fantastic piece! I'd love to do it again sometime. But Patrick and I struck a friendship during those performances, and uh, he agreed to do this original voiceover of uh, the the. Uh, story or poem that was the uh, the inspiration or the program around which Vivaldi wrote the complete four seasons. So uh, this may be the very first um, uh, the first occurrence of what might be called program music was the, the Vivaldi four seasons. In other words, it was written around a script. Very few people know that. And so my recording was actually the first one to include this script that was the uh, poetic inspiration of uh, 
that Vivaldi used for the Four Seasons. So that was that project. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing. Um, yeah. I, and the guys also want to know. You, you mentioned a lot of like kind of the the, the amazing stuff that, that gamers are really into this music, with, especially with Final Fantasy. Um, ha, have response wise, like, have they been really influential? Uh, you know, in the music as, since you started this, like, what's the response like? Are they seeking you out uh, from this? Maybe some of the other projects you're doing. When you say seeking seeking me out, do you mean? Um fans or do you mean yeah fans ga- uh, gamers other... gamers may be discovering you via the final fantasy music oh sure no mm-hmm. no question um it's true that i've been very deeply associated with the music of final fantasy and we we have here have written a lot of the arrangements that we perform live in the concert we also collaborate with japan so yes it's only natural that uh that that would happen i've conducted a series of concerts with the WDR uh, German Radio Orchestra in Cologne um, that were new arrangers' versions of uh, concept pieces based on different video game platforms um, besides Final Fantasy, video games, uh, all kinds of things. I've also been associated with the Royal Stockholm Philharmonic, their video game concert series, uh, and conducted many of those. Um, but again, it's, a, it's, <laughs> I have to tell you, it's a very varied and, um, deep kind of a musical career because I've worked with a tremendous amount of pop artists like Diana Ross, mm-hmm. wrote all of her, um, orchestrations, um, Jewel, Peter Cetera, um, the Irish tenors, Bocelli, uh, just a tremendous amount of variation, um, Charlotte Church, you know, a lot of the uh, people over the years, and we literally have shelves and shelves of music here that we're dealing with all the time with these various concerts. So, um, uh, but I think all of that, all of that melting pot of different styles and genres helps uh, with the reinterpretation and the uh, bringing to the concert stage the music of Final Fantasy because Final Fantasy scores. Uematsu used all kinds of different styles. There's there's straight out rock and roll. There's mm-hmm. a full, beautiful um, film score type uh, orchestration. Um, people liken it to uh, the music of John Williams. Um, there are full operas, as I mentioned. There are pop songs that have been orchestrated for single solo artists. There are swing and jazz versions. Um all of these styles have to be incorporated on the stage at the same time. And it's a great pleasure to be able to work with the Pittsburgh Symphony because they're at that at that level that they can pull this off so wonderfully. I also have some history with the Pittsburgh Symphony Brass. I've produced a whole series of recordings with them. So I'm looking forward to working with George Bosberg and the guys when I uh, come in there for the concert. Nice. Uh, awesome homecoming for you. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's an old favorite, Pittsburgh, so I'm looking forward to it. That's great. I hope you enjoy a permani sandwich while you're here. <laughs> enjoy a what? Uh, per- a permani sandwich while you're here. And uh... Uh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. So, hey, real quick, so so if, uh, kind of final question here, if, uh, you know, obviously people are going to get in this because they're into Final Fantasy and maybe just expose them, as we mentioned already, into symphony, into, into live music of, of this nature. Um, if they are a Final Fantasy fan, and what is something that uh, you think maybe just a general kind of gaming fan wouldn't discover that if they if I if I like Final Fantasy music, what classical or symphony music should I seek out to kind of expand beyond that? Yeah, you know the whole question of we can come in and sell out concerts Mm -hmm. um, with this production. The whole question of how to bring in those fans to regular subscription concerts is a topic that I've spoken with a lot of music administrators and uh, about, because it can't be just one-sided, which it it is currently. I mean, we come in as a a single or two concerts or whatever as a, a special, and it's a great success but they always have a hard time getting these same fans back into a regular subscription concert. I think what has to happen is the orchestra music directors and administrators have to 
um, take the plunge and treat um, some video game music as an equal. Um, they need to program, for instance, one piece by either Nobu Uematsu or another uh, highest quality video game music composer, they need to program that as a music-only performance on a regular su subscription concert. Mm -hmm. For instance, there would be no problem with um, One Winged Angel being performed next to Carmina Burana or um, uh, any number of uh, Prokofiev pieces or uh, any number of uh, Stravinsky or mm -hmm. um, Tchaikovsky pieces. It's speaking the same language, and it can definitely live on the concert hall stage. Um, it becomes more difficult when orchestras essentially are saying to everyone, you can live on the concert hall stage on your concert, but you're not really going to make an entrance on the regular subscription series. And that, I think, is the crux of it. We need to have cross-fertilization. These fans are delighted to hear the orchestra. The orchestra will receive the loudest cheers at these concerts and standing ovations for their performance. Um, but I think that orchestras have to go a little further to bring these people in. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't see, personally, I don't see any problem in doing that. I actually did one concert in Stockholm. Uh, this was kind of the reverse act. It was an entire concert of video game music and we stuck in one piece uh, from the classical repertoire list. We did uh, Mars from uh, the Planets by Holst. And we opened after intermission with that piece. And I turned around to the audience and said, um, unbelievably, that piece was written. And I, I mentioned the date 1914 or whenever that comes from. Uh, and I said, I don't know about you, but when I hear that piece, I hear stormtroopers coming in. Um, because of the great similarity to the music of Star Wars and other things mm -hmm. uh, in that particular piece. And I, I told them at the time from the podium that <clears throat> it's very important for all of us to remember that we all stand on the shoulders of all the greats that came before us, all the great composers. Um, Nobu Uematsu didn't just jump out of thin air. Um, and until we have a great education system, mm -hmm that can expose everyone at, a, at an early age to all these different styles of music. And right now, music education in the United States is a very challenging thing, mm -hmm. as you know, with uh, budget cuts. So I think there has to be a concerted effort because we need to grow a new audience. And here's one that's just waiting to come to hear the orchestra. Um, I think that's what they need to do, is some, some proactive cross-fertilization of bringing that audience into a regular subscription. Amazing. Amazing. Um, definitely with you on that. Uh, go check it out. It's uh, Final Fantasy Distant Worlds. Uh, FFDistantWorlds.com if you want information on when it's coming to your town. Uh, as well, if you're uh, in the Pittsburgh area, uh, or you can make it in for that. Go to PittsburghSymphony.org. Uh, any dates coming up? Anything else coming up with the series you want to uh, 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 get out there for people that may have come across this? Well, we have all kinds of uh, interesting stuff. We're playing in Cleveland um, our new chamber music series. It's called A New World, mm. Infant Music from Final mm. Fantasy. And this is really a, a new way to look at this. It's just music only. It's in small venues, 500, 600 feet. Mm. It involves string quartets, a couple of woodwinds, a little bit of percussion. Mm. Uh, and it's just an absolutely gorgeous, uh, intimate and close-in look at this. So I will be performing that in Cleveland on uh, July 24th, about a week or so before we get into Pittsburgh. So um, that's one date that's coming up that's close by. And we'll also be playing Distant Worlds with the Rochester Philharmonic. We'll be back in Chicago December 26 with Distant Worlds. Uh, Nobu Uematsu will be out there with us. But I'm most excited about uh, August 1st with the Pittsburgh Symphony. That's going to be a great show. Awesome. Go check it out. Get your tickets while you still can. And uh, thank you very much, Arnie Roth, for joining us here. Uh, so, so great to talk to you as an old time going to the going to the symphony as a kid and uh, seeing seeing this awesome stuff happening. So, Well, thank you so much for the time. I mean, there's as you you well know, you're a fan. You know that there's nothing like 
um, hearing well over 100 musicians on stage. Oh. Powerful. Uh, the dynamic range and the articulation range is just infinite. It's it's really mind numbing. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. And of course, you can check out everything else going on. We'll be following this. Any other fun stuff like this over at insertcointobegin.com, awesomecast.net for all the other geeky things that aren't video games. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this really kind of fits all of it. You know, a lot of us are music geeks around here too. I think I'm going to dust off the old trombone and maybe get at it again <laughs> myself. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. Fun down and, and join us. Bye. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you guys. You have been my awesome, awesome guests. You guys have been my awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.